At first, O God, anoint my tongue in sharing your word with your people, that we may be encouraged to prepare ourselves for this coming harvest. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please take your seats, those in the church and those at home. I believe you are relaxing. Once again, happy 2021, our first Thanksgiving to ask you, Ro. Happy 7th annual conference Thanksgiving to the Nigeria Methodist Chaplaincy. And happy wonderful communion healing service this morning. Please, I will need the, my own communion on the table now. This morning, God has prepared his table. Well, I need to say, it's been long since I've been on this altar here to preach to you. I've been out about two or three Sundays, so it's nice to be back home. And it's nice to see more people returning back to church. It's nice to see more people on Zoom too. Briefly, because of our time, I want to share with you what I, maybe you are asking me, DJ, why will you bring a gospel reading about marriage into a harvest? Yes, <laughs> I, could, <laughs> I could see Papa smiling. Well, you are okay with our reading from Deuteronomy? You are okay with our reading from Hebrew? What? Why mark of all goes to on this special day? Then I just have a word for you. Faith of our Father is a faith of harvest. Faith of our Father is a faith of harvest. Please, can you go back to that last hymn we sang, the last two verses or stanzas, please? Come ye, thank people, come. I want you to see the summary of what we are doing today, both the affairs and thanksgiving. Thank God we have brought a lot of things to be given out as a means of affairs. We've presented it before God out of much that God has given to us. And I know. A lot of people are waiting for that by the grace of God. And even the pandemic last year, we still had our office. And uh, our London West Mission was so happy to come to collect even more than what I'm seeing here. I know there are still more at the back. Even so, Lord, quickly come. Bring thy office home. Look at what we have done today. We have gone to different parts of our family life and brought together this item. The question is, what happened to those remaining items there? This is the one we have brought home. I pray, may you be part of those people that God will bring home on the last day. Oh, I can't hear your amen. That's all the summary. Many are called, but few are chosen. Gather thou thy people here, free from sorrow, free from sin. Affect, free us from sorrow. Affect, free us from sin. Affect, for bringing this item, as free them to be on the counter and their men to be used. I'm sharing with you this morning, faith of our first, faith of our Father. God is not only affecting items. God is going to affect woman, me and you. And that led us to the issue of marriage as a sacred institution between a man and a woman to become one. Marriage is a sacred institution that God instituted to procreate for affairs. 
Without marriage, the world will be barren. Hallelujah. Without marriage, the world will be barren. There will be promiscuity. Without marriage, anybody can do what they like. Even when we are still doing marriage, people are still doing what they like. Thank you. So what are we talking about here now? Affairs of faith of affairs is the faith of our father. Is the faith that was based on what? On procreation through marriage. And we are by going in the book of man. If you look towards the uh, end, sorry. Let's quickly go back to that. Reading from Mark. Thank you. Mark chapter 10. What is the essence of that marriage? Why is it the faith of affairs? In verse, let me say verse 13. Yeah. Why look at it in verse 7, 19? The Bible says, For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be made one with his wife to do what? To become one so they can procreate. Well, you are not doing marriage seminar, but the main importance of marriage. Number one, to have companionship, complementing one another. Number two, to avoid sin. And number three, to procreate. But the world has turned it this way. To procreate for sex and companionship. And that's why many of them are breaking. But here, the end, becoming one flesh, what God has joined together, man must not separate. I pray. You will not be part of those separating what God has done together. But look at it in verse the, 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 where you can even see the reason why people are questioning Jesus about divorce. No, you cannot call Jesus unaware. Jesus quickly referred them back to what Moses said. And Moses said it to them about divorce because of the hardness of their hearts. When people are not ready to help themselves, when the man just want to dispose a woman as a destitute. And if that is, if that happens, look at it in verse 13. They brought children to him to touch. Our first of marriage is to procreate, to bring children to receive divine touch of God. Oh, we are talking about our first faith of our first. We have done it with material things. But faith of affairs is also about spiritual things. Our home, our life. All of us sitting here one day, we are going to be affairs all. But God is what is something that is so important about affairs. The children. Thank you for children that are here this morning. The children, they brought children to into touch. The disciple rebuked them. Are we rebooking children in public to church today? What are we doing in stopping the children to come to church today? To come to receive the divine touch? But Jesus saw this and he was indignant. The Bible says in another version, greatly displeased, greatly worried. What worried Jesus most is when children don't come to him. Churches are being closed down today because there is no continuity of those who can take over. Once upon a time, I dare not argue with my great grandmother when we are not in there and we are at home. That five o'clock a.m. morning prayer, either you like it or not, you can scruple, you can do anything, you must follow up to the church. You cannot get to the church and sleep beside there and be under the pew. <laughs> but you will be there. Bring it them home. And those are the things that, you know, grow people like me. Just as Timothy.
what you did under his grandmother Eunice. That is the office. But the problem today is we are so focused on the material things of our affairs, but we, ne we are neglecting the spiritual aspects. A church without children has no future. A nation without children, the youth coming up has no future. Go to churches that have been closed, you will not see the life of a child or youth there. So this affairs of 2021, is challenging me, even with the chaplaincy. Not only asking in the chaplaincy, yesterday during the youth seminar, I was, I was greatly displeased. Greatly displeased. Our youth coordinator, Dr. Akiwawo, need to go outside the chaplaincy to get youths to present things to us. The question is, Mothers, fathers, what are you doing? Are you bringing the affairs home before? Ch I know on the last day, my grandmother can say to Jesus, hey, look, my grandson is one of my affairs. We are, you see, that's why when I look at mama, sister there, and my sister, nothing must happen, they will bring that young man. Because that is the affairs. That was the way my grandmother brought me. Please, God will reward you, ma'am. God will reward, and as many bring in, I wish that we don't have children. Are we barren? No. We are talking of faith of affairs that bring, bring affairs to God's presence. Let the children come to me. Do not try to stop them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such. Why? Because their mind is pure. They are not polluted. Until the church can only become holy when the children are there. Because your children will tell you, don't do that. Even at that, when I get home, my children will say, but that's why you do that. The children will call you to order because. When you show them the will of the Lord, it stayed in their mind. And when you do contrary, they look at it, but this is not what you taught us in the church. People went. They, you know, it says, for such, for the kingdom of God belong to such as these. I tell you, Jesus is speaking here. Whoever does not accept the children, the kingdom of God like a child will never enter in. And he puts his arm around them. Oh, Jesus is waiting to put his arm around our children, our youth, our children, to embrace them so that they will not be embraced by the world. Again, I was in the program with the American church yesterday. The same thing that has been discussed are the issue of children and youth. And those youth who presented papers were so worried that they have been neglected by the main church. This affairs, God is calling us to bring the affairs home. To bring the affairs home. Which affairs are we talking about? Not only affairs of food, affairs of soul, affairs of our children. I want to assure you, if all of us, both within the chaplaincy in Askew Road, we can do what Jesus commanded, this place will be filled up. Faith of our Father. Is the faith of affairs that bring affairs to the kingdom of God. In Askew Road, God has put us in this strategic place to bring affairs to the kingdom of God in our circuit. Will you be ready when the Lord shall come? Will you be ready when the Lord shall come? I will be ready. I will be ready. I will be ready when the Lord shall come. I will be ready. I will be ready. I will be ready when the Lord shall come. Shall we rise as we prepare for the communion? And those at home, please get your element of bread and this one ready as we share together in this meal of healing, meal of restoration. If you are not God, you are in the church, you don't got your 
element of bread and wine, just wave your hand, the usher will get one to you. Don't open it yet. What you are holding is not just ordinary element. It's the symbol of the body and blood of Christ. And in that symbol, there is healing, there is life, there is salvation, there is peace. I don't know what you, what you want this morning, what you want the Lord to do in your life this morning. Begin to pray in your mind. Lord, I'm here to be part of this celebration. Lord, renew me. Let this element bring into my life healing and restoration. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Okay, for I should give a thanks and praise. God, our Father, Mother, we give you thanks and praise for all that you have made. For the stars in their splendor and the world in its wonder. And for the glorious gift of human life. With the angel, with the saints and angels in heaven, we praise your holy name together. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, you go on loving us even when we turn away from you. You sent your son Jesus, who healed those who are sick, wept with those who are sad, and forgave sinners. To show the world your love, he died for all upon the cross, and you raised him up in glory. On the night before Jesus died, he had supper with his disciples. Please, I mean, you can gently open that the first. Lilon lead that lead you to the bread. He took bread. Thank you. As we are thanking you, broke it, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. Together. Jesus, the Lord says, I am the bread, the bread of life for the world. A man. After supper, he took a cup of wine, thank you, and gave it to the disciple, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This cup is a new covenant in my blood. It will be shared for you and all the people. For the forgiveness of sins, do this to remember me. Together. And so, God of love, we remember that Jesus died and rose again to make all things new. Through his offering for us all, we offer our whole life to you in thanks and praise. Send the Holy Spirit that this gift of bread and wine may be for us Christ's saving body and blood. May this same Spirit unite us with all your people on earth in heaven. Bring us at last to live in your glory with all your sins. That we may praise you forever through Jesus, your Son, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Christ is the bread of life. We receive the bread. The cup of blessing for which we give thanks is a sharing 
in the blood of Christ together. Christ is the true vine. We drink the blood together. Please be seated as we pray. Jesus, Lamb of God. Jesus, bearer of our sins. Jesus, redeemer of the world. Let us pray together. Jesus 